we interrupt this program in order to bring you tonight's special presentation of Arkansas's State of the Building Address. Mr. Speaker, the head coach of the University of Arkansas Razorbacks. <laughs> Two years ago, we began construction of a brand new arena here in Fayetteville. It represents a clear example of the kind of change that is necessary to keep Arkansas basketball competitive and strong, clear into the 21st century. At the time, I said I had no intentions of replacing Barnhill Arena, I said I merely wanted to build a bigger Barnhill. And with your help, that's precisely what we have done. <laughs> Finally, my friends, I promise you tonight, we will continue the tradition and make Bud Walton Arena one of the toughest places to play basketball in America. Thank you. This is the scene where so many sports decisions have been made in the great state of Arkansas, and tonight, no different, as Vanderbilt is in to pay a visit. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to our continuing coverage of Decision 94. I'm Tim Brando. As you may have heard, Nolan Richardson is supremely confident about tonight's game, and why not? After all, he's had control of this house since the Sutton administration began some 20 years ago in 1974. But there is a differing viewpoint on the floor where action will later convene down to our correspondent, Larry Conley. Thank you, Tim. I'm down here with the Vanderbilt delegation, and they have just voted to not adopt the Nolan Richardson agenda. The one thing I can promise you, that there will be a floor fight forthcoming. Tim, back to you. All right, Larry, that's the way it is. And again, it's Super Tuesday that could again be the difference in Decision 94. Thank you, Brad. A tremendous game there in the Big Ten. And now we're continuing Super Tuesday live from the Bud Walton Arena in Fayetteville, Arkansas. In the Southeastern Conference, your Advil starting lineups looks this way. First for the Vanderbilt Commodores, Billy McCaffrey, the one to watch in the backcourt as always. Not shooting the ball as well as he did last year, but certainly delivering the ball much better to his teammates. The Arkansas Razorbacks, Corliss Williamson, the top field goal shooting percentage player in the Southeastern Conference. The bull, the strength inside for the Razorbacks. Nolan Richardson, what a magnificent job he has done here in Fayetteville. His team, by the way, unbeaten this year on ESPN, and when the cameras have come on, he's 10-0 this year, so they love the bright lights here in Arkansas. And the new head coach of the Vanderbilt Commodores is Jan Van Bredekoff. Been a difficult start for this team, a veteran group trying to get used to a new system after Eddie Fogler left. Of course, very successful at Cornell from a tremendous basketball family. And Tim, really a basketball team that he's just now getting his fingers into. Should have a good one tonight. These two clubs are pretty evenly matched. Our officials, Don Rutledge, R.T. Day, and John Clockerty. Vanderbilt opens up in the man-to-man -man defense. Pretty good pressure on the outside. You see McMahon guarding Thurman. That's a wash. Both players about even. Malik Evans on Remont. Davor Remont has been one of the more productive Arkansas players during what has really been a recent offensive slump, and a lot of that due to the loss of Clint McDaniel defensively. Corey Beck forces one up, does it go down, hauled down by Malik Evans. Nice defensive work by McCaffrey that time. McCaffrey with a little push up on Beck. That pass is off the hands of Lawson, control to Arkansas. Tim, I would think that Vanderbilt, even though they're averaging 80 points a game, would want to come into this arena and really play a little bit better controlled offense. 
a basketball team that does not want to get blown away early like a lot of clubs have in the Bud Walton Arena. Williamson in the way. Tough to stop that guy in there. You've almost got to get help on the backside. If you're going to play behind him, somebody's got to double down. If you're front him, you've got to have offside help. McCaffrey off the dribble, finds Hall, baseline extended. Loose ball, finally brought down by Billy McCaffrey. Evans drives baseline, was on the inline, it'll go back to Arkansas. We talked about the loss of McDaniel and what he means to the Arkansas offense because they initiate so much of what they normally do on the defensive end. This guy's all offense right here, Scotty Thurman. Beck's probably their best defensive guard. And this guy has been number two beyond the arc, Davor Remots. He always went by Remock because Nolan Richardson coached him, and there's another turnover forced by Williamson. Now that Remox is a starter, he says, uh, hey, coach, I want to go by the correct pronunciation. Well, we don't want people out there to think we don't know what his name is. He just informed <laughs> us before the game he wants to be known as Remox. Now he's hearing his name on the public address system a bit more. Stewart. Stewart hits it at two again. Not unusual for mere territory for him. Here's a big run to start. It's always tough. Survival of the first five minutes when you play in Fayetteville. Arkansas into a, a little bit more full court pressure, even more than what they've been doing for the last two games. They got a steal. Corey Beck rejected by Hall. How many times have we seen it, though, in this building, Larry? Just getting to the first TV timeout, sometimes very difficult for the opposition. It's a Vanderbilt team that's got good personnel, too. There's the dump down. Nice pass. Oh, Thurman lost it. Oh, Corey Beck made a terrific delivery. Williamson. Paul brings it down, and McCaffrey looks to push it. They got numbers, four on two. The kick out to McMahon. Ronnie McMahon will be a key in tonight's game. He'll have to hit a few of those. Beck. Nice job by McMahon getting back to it again. Williamson on the offensive glass over Evans. Tim, he is so strong inside. Doesn't jump real well, but gets the good position. 10-3, Arkansas, seven-point lead, just over three minutes gone. They scored eight unanswered at the opening bell, and Evans is out of bounds again. Five turnovers already for Vandy. And Tim, Jan Van Bredikoff has already made the decision. He's going to go to the bench with Frank Seckler to come in to replace Evans to give him a little bit more ball handling in the backcourt. Jan Van Bredikoff, very confident about his team, thinking that may, they may be ready to turn it up a notch in February. You gotta come over to play, Tim. You gotta be physically ready to play. I mean, mentally too, but you gotta be ready to take the bump, the grind, people pushing and shoving, getting to you. This is a very physical basketball team, these Razorbacks. Sucker. Soft left handed Jay from easy. beyond the arc for Frank Sucker. Ooh, reach down on the bench. Paul with a nice steal as they try to go end to end to Williamson. Sucker an ace already. McMahon dumps it to Lawson. Remots got in his way. Davor off the back hand. Doesn't count, it went over the backboard. It actually hit the shot clock. Yeah, it did. Into Vanderbilt, Ryan Milburn checking into the game, the junior from Russell Springs, Kentucky. Vanderbilt, the team, as you see, all getting a quick blow before the TV timeout. Second off the bench for Vanderbilt actually hit seven of eight threes against South Carolina this year. So he can shoot the basketball. McCaffrey draws the foul from Remots. Corey Beck rather than Remots getting the reach. Beck was on the backside and got him on the arm as he started up. Did we talk a lot about Billy McCaffrey? I know you and I have all day long about what he has done for this team. Obviously not having the same kind of numbers he had last year. But I really think a more well-rounded player this year perhaps than last year. You see his field goal percentage 
down somewhat from last year when he was co-SEC player of the year along with Jamal Mashburn. But so many gimmicky defenses have come at him this year. It's been very difficult for him to get the kind of shots he needs. There you see the players of the year, and you're right. Jan Van Bredekoff, 20 years ago, a player of the year in this league. But those shots a bit more difficult now for McCaffrey with the loss of Elder and Anglin. As Vanderbilt continues to grow, down only three at the TV timeout. Syracuse and Connecticut, what a high-scoring affair. Watch Adrian Autry fight his way into the paint, pull up, hits the shot. Jerome Sheffer has fouled out of the game, but it's just a four-point contest. We'll keep you updated. All right, John, thank you. Back here down in the Southeastern Conference, Vanderbilt struggling early with five quick turnovers down 8 nothing. claw their way back, and are down only three with 15-52 remaining just underway. Timmy, I know you share in this feeling with me about uh, Jimmy Calhoun. I hope he's all, hope he's all right at Connecticut. Yeah. Bad walking pneumonia getting back with that team up there. As we take a look at Clint McDaniel on that Arkansas bench. They sorely miss that young man because he is their best defender on the ball. So much happens when he's in the game. Stewart to Williamson. You know, the other aspect of Williamson, he's now more versatile when they bring the tank, Darnell Robinson or Lee Wilson, and he can actually move to the three spot. Mm -hmm. They're on the floor pretty well, too. Now McCaffrey's got Beck out. Him. Beck is really their best defensive guard with McDaniel out of there. You can see Arkansas playing man to man and a lot of pressure. Watch the double screen. Lawson tried to set it. He can set a double screen by himself. McMahon. He got quickly Arkansas recovers. McMahon for three. He's feeling it. He's got a couple of them. Six for him. Ten for Vanderbilt, and they're down by two. Ronnie McMahon, junior from Athens, Tennessee. Vanderbilt's on a three-game road swing. They lost to Florida this past weekend. They can ill afford to lose to Arkansas because they've got to go to Louisville for that third road trip. Stewart, oh, light it up. The big dog is ready to hunt. A little 360 for a 260. Five points for Dwight Stewart. And that's degrees for pounds. <laughs> McCaffrey over Beck. Tough shot. Corey's defense was excellent. Timmy, that's another thing he's doing. He's forcing shots. Billy McCaffrey is. Needs to back off. Let the game to him come to him just a little bit. Williamson running away from Milburn, and that ball deflected off of Corliss and is awarded to Vanderbilt. As you see, Malik Evans coming back into the game. And Roger Crawford also checking in for Davor Remax. That was a pretty good move by Jan Brandvedikov to get Malik Evans out of the game. I didn't think he was mentally into it. Got him over there, got him about three or four minutes, got him settled. Let's see how he plays from now on. Look at the extension on the defense. Great pressure out front. Lawson doesn't want anything to do with that basketball out there. He threw a bullet to McCaffrey's head. Sucker sets up over Crawford. Timmy, you got to go get him. I mean, those three guys can shoot. Sucker, McCaffrey, McMahon. 14-13, a pair of threes for Sucker since coming in. Oh, a good look by Crawford, knowing right where Williamson would be. Sucker again for three. That one should have dropped. Evans comes down with it, and the foul against Corliss Williamson. Take a look down on the inside right here. Arkansas's offense, great passing. Look at this. Crawford looks, recognizes Williamson. Never stop that shot. Anyway, you could have a 10-ton truck on those arms, and it'll never stop him from going up. We talked about the loss of Clint McDaniel, as you see Elmer Martin coming in. Don't you agree, Larry, that the loss of McDaniel really bothers Arkansas much more on the road than it should at home? Oh, I don't think there's any question it does. And right now, Arkansas is struggling against this, or not struggling with their defense. They're putting the turnovers on Vanderbilt. And he needs to take better care of the basketball. Now, that's the young man that we talked about his defense. Robert Shepard performed really the same task for this team a year ago. But he'll be back this week. Clint McDaniel will be. Good double down by Vanderbilt. 
Alec Dillard in the game. The shooter. Alex Dillard. His record numbers for three-pointers have waned somewhat in Southeastern Conference play as the defense has improved against him, but he's always a tremendous threat from very deep. Look at Crawford on McCaffrey. Good defense. Milburn up over Williamson. Nice play by Brian Milburn. Good role player, Brian Milburn. He comes in. He gets the points when he needs them. He's a pretty good rebounder. Very physical. He'll take up some room in there. Stewart took steps. R.T. Day spots it. And it will go the other way. And Darnell Robinson, the big guy, the freshman of influence, out of Emory High in Oakland, California, coming back into the game. He sat out some time, as did Wilson. Lee Wilson checking into the game as well, number 33 in white. Put, the, put both big freshmen in there, huh? Robinson missed seven games. In fact, Wilson missed a couple of games with injuries, so themselves had their share of problems this year. And now they got Clint McDaniel out. He's already missed two games. Got injured in the Mississippi State game. So here we are, Larry, as Secker loads up. Well, they better come and get that young man from Wisconsin. He can bury him. We're tied at 18. Dillard for three. Woods comes into the game as well for Vanderbilt. That one's knocked away by Martin, and it will be controlled to the Commodores. And look at that one. With only a minute five left, Syracuse now up by 11 over UConn. John Saunders will keep you updated along with Clark Kellogg, and they'll be along at halftime. It's tough being in the big in the top ten, isn't it? Yeah, you bet it is. Purdue's already found out tonight. It's like UConn may be on their way down. That foul will come prior to the shot. Crawford picking it up. As you see Hall about to re-enter now. The bench strength, Vanderbilt will have to use theirs judiciously tonight. Here we are already eight minutes into the game. Already 11 Razorbacks have entered the game. Therein lies the difference. The UConn's unbeaten streak in the Big East about to come to an end. Adrian Autry with the steal, plus one. Syracuse goes over the century mark. No, not 198, but they lead it 105-90. Back to you. All right, John, they've extended it and are well on their way, and it would appear at this point. Shot selection as we look at this one. Vanderbilt warming the nets from the arc and beyond, and that's the reason they have tied this game and have their opportunity at the lead for the first time. Well, Sector's got three for three off of the bench. Oh, what a find, a nugget off of the bench for Jan Van Bredikoff. McMahon's two for two. Nice backdoor cut by McCaffrey, but he lost the feet. He was looking for Woods. Dillard on the loose. Count the basket. Good move by Alex Dillard on the inside. The old man on the team, he's 25 years old. In fact, he'll be 26 by the time he graduates. Watch this move. Hall goes up the goaltending call. It was proper. 20 to 18, Hogs by two. Well, McMahon, lucky he didn't lose that basketball. Yeah, he did, he double dribbled. And just as I said that, he put it down on the floor again. Mm -hmm. Just a tremendous opening to Super Tuesday, and there's Dillard from the Ozone. As we told you, he can light it up from NBA range and beyond. He was on the Hogs' tail. I mean, that's way out there. 12 in one game, if you'll recall, earlier in the year. McMahon for three. Wilson brings it down. McMahon tried from the Hawk snoot. Dill it again. Saved to Robinson. A little crazy out there right now. The type of game Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt does not want to play. Hall slaps that one away from Lee Wilson. Evans over Robinson. Too strong, and you're right. Vanderbilt being rushed into the Arkansas flow. Yeah, this is a game Arkansas loves to play up and down the floor. Good tough defense. Who's got the best athletes? On the floor, Hall gets position and draws the foul from Martin. Nice check off of the board that time on the outside. Martin just tried to fight over the top. 
So this game is rapidly moving in the direction of Vanderbilt. It's a type of game I don't think Jan Van Bredikoff, when he brought his troops in here from Nashville, expected to play. He wanted a very docile game, something where he could get up and down the floor, play half court. Not what his club wants to do. Offer all over McCaffrey out front. Look at Lawson pulling Martin away. Hall open at the top. Sucker again for three. Oh. oh. He should get one and a half on that one. It was so far down. That's two that he's really been robbed. Crawford. Followed by Wilson. Wilson. The leading rebounding team in the Southeastern Conference is Arkansas, and they do it on great follow-ups. 25 to 18, seven unanswered for the Hogs. McMahon ends the drop with a three-pointer. All of his have come from three-point range. He has nine, and it's a four-point Arkansas lead. Zone defense by Vanderbilt. Looks like a little bit of a 2-3. Vanderbilt tries to go to a 1-3-1, a 2-3, a 1-3-1 by Arkansas. Wilson. Wilson taps it through. Martin commits the foul on the reach. And here come the Hogs. I'd say they bring him in by loads, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. This is not the slice type barbecue. No. This is the chopped guy. <laughs> These, these, this, hogs, this group of hogs can come on the floor and play. This is the first group. Second group did pretty well. They I got him a lead. Yep. 27-21. They're up by six. And they're really spacing out now. McCaffrey for three off the back iron. Corey Beck clears. Beck dumps it to Stewart, fouled by Lawson. He can't handle Stewart down there. Tim Lawson really not a very good defender, even though he's got great size in there at 16 under 264. Not a good defender once the ball comes into the paint. Now watch Stewart give it back up. Now Lawson should be on one side of it. Instead, he reaches around. This is pretty hard to move around Stewart. Took you about three days to get around. First foul on Chris Lawson. The Indiana transfer. Dwight Stewart, one of those players, you look at him over and over again, and he lost weight since last year. Defenders just don't think he can go outside and beat you, and he consistently does. I think people in the Southeastern Conference know, look at Remont's up in the air, another offensive rebound for Arkansas. High lob to Corliss Williamson. Sucker gets caught slapping. Don't forget, coming up on Wednesday, action from the ACC and Big East. It begins with Maryland taking on Virginia, followed by St. John's and Villanova. That's tomorrow night right here on ESPN's coverage of NCAA basketball. Timmy, how about Joe Smith of wow. Maryland, huh? Is he a terrific player? I think they can wrap up that award in that league? No. No, absolutely not. You don't think oh, so? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I no. think I think he can. Oh, Impact no. for one team. Stackhouse is playing great in North Carolina. See, I think he's overshadowed. I think he's overshadowed the, the people around him. Smith has meant everything to that Maryland team. Don't disagree with his ability. I just think there are a lot of good freshmen in that league as there are around the country. McCaffrey. That ball was deflected. Nolan Richardson was arguing a possible travel. But John Clafferty spotted a deflection. Oh, another tip through by Beck this time. And how many times do you see a Beck or a Williamson slide through there? Guards that get rebounds. McCaffrey. Billy having a tough start. Arkansas is doing a terrific job on the offensive end. Watch the move by Thurman down the middle. Lawson almost got a blocking foul. Look at Beck with a follow up. One of the better rebounding guards you'll find in the country. Corey Beck. We've seen that through the years consistently, Larry, with Nolan Richardson coach teams. Guards that really board very, very well. 32-23, Arkansas by nine. 
Arkansas with a nine point lead over Vanderbilt 32 23 under eight minutes left in the opening half. Along with Larry Connolly, I am Jim Brando. We talk from time to time about home court advantage. I think we can honestly say, Larry, that this building may be worth about 20 points. Well, in your opinion, I agree. I think it's 15, closer to 15. When you talk about playing in Fayetteville, you got to talk about the crowd. It's not just the building, but it's the people that come in here. Look at the seating capacity of 18.6. The old Barn Hill was at 9,000. But the home record, that hadn't changed very much from the old building. Look at the Razorback scoring home and away. And that's what makes the building what it is, is the people inside of it. President Clinton has already been here for one Arkansas encounter, and if, you, if he's watching tonight, we ask him to stay with us at halftime. We'll talk a little bit more about Barn Hill, its exit, and the Bud Walton Arena, and its arrival, and what it's meant to Arkansas. got away from that zone. They're back in their man to man. Let's see if they go back inside again. Thurman. Too strong. Milburn. Will get caught with a foul. Tim Corliss Williams is one of those players that finds a way to get to the basketball. He'll find some way if he's behind the defender to wheel around him or just to physically set him aside. This is a very strong guy who's a terrific offensive rebounder. In fact, he's a terrific all-around player, but I really like the way he maneuvers inside. And we'll just back and still in that zone defense now, out of the out-of-bounds play. Williams is trying to call for the ball inside. He's got Hall whipped if he can get it to him. Stewart over Lawson. Secker, make sure he's in position, and we have a foul spotted. It'll be against Corliss Williams in a push. Two fouls now on Corliss Williams. Very important for Sutter to identify where those Arkansas traps may come. McCaffrey over Williams. Again, not set. He was not set to shoot the basketball. Rushing his shot. Great play by McMahon. He nearly saved it as well, going up into the expensive seats. Darnell Robinson will check back into the game. Corliss Williamson sits down, having picked up his second foul with 6.43 remaining. Corliss has 10 points. Vanderbilt changes defenses again. Robinson loses it. Last touch by Thurman. The ball will be awarded to Vanderbilt. You know, you watch Scotty Thurman, you recognize that he's yet to bust out in this game. It could happen at any time. Got a little bit of a scoring drought on both ends uh, for about the last three minutes. The Remont's all over McCaffrey. Good, do good defense again by Arkansas. McCaffrey, a leader. Still won't fall for Billy McCaffrey. Robinson loses his dribble. Now McMahon with numbers to Billy McCaffrey. Fouled by Thurman. Timmy, you had a chance right there to take a look at Billy McCaffrey on the drive. Go back and take a look at his positioning for his shot. Now, look at this. Very slowly. Now, in slow motion, look. See, he doesn't have his feet underneath of him to go up and get the good release. When he's got his feet underneath of him, the good drop of the legs, the push-up, and the follow-through, that's the Billy McCaffrey shot we're used to seeing, the one we saw at Duke and the one we saw in the early year from Vanderbilt. It has not been there this year. He's rushing his shots. He needs to get in better position, get his legs ready, and get set. Jan Van Bredekop addressing that issue has tried to utilize a few more screens, double screens, and that kind of thing to get McCaffrey free. Of course, as you recall, when Eddie Fogler was coaching Vanderbilt, they had the passing game, and McCaffrey got a number of his shots. I think, though, the loss of Lee Elder and Kevin Anglin to help create some of those wide-open mm -hmm. jumpers probably has affected him as much as anything. And Malik Evans coming back into the game. This was a team that returned three starters from a club that went 28 and 6. As you see, Kevin Anglin, who's now a restricted earnings coach on this team. Nice pass inside by Beck. Thurman missed it. 
Well, Corey Beck really delivers the ball well. Good look. The dribble drive from Secker sets up Evans. But it won't fall, and Hall will be called over the back. Jan Van Bredikoff not happy with that shot selection by Malik Evans. Crawford comes back into the game, and Scotty Thurman sits down. You know, Tim, I really feel like clubs that come in here to play in Fayetteville really kind of get caught up in the excitement. They want to play the same style of play that the Razorbacks play. And Evans got caught up in it in that shot. Wants to rush. Wants to show he can shoot. Robinson forced that one a bit. Just that quickly, Lee Wilson gets up and will check in for him, no doubt. Nolan Richardson will chat with Darnell. Look at Beck on Evans. That's 6-2 against 6-7. Hall over Remox. Woods on the glass. Saved by Beck, but right to Woods. Fouled by Robinson. Nolan Richardson wanted the walk prior to the foul. I think Chris Woods might have felt like he had a thrashing machine in there. Everybody was taking a whack at him. Twice he got the basketball. This is the second one, and he's trying to work his way through two defenders, and Beck was all over his arms. I'm not sure who got the foul there, but Beck did get him on the arms. It was the swipe over the head from Robinson that was tagged. But you're right. It could have been Beck just as easily. Here is Woods at the strike. Young man that leads this team in block shots. He has 13 this year. They've been getting a few more minutes from him this season. Out of Francis Howell North High in St. Charles, Missouri. I think we've seen a little bit of offensive paralysis on the part of these two clubs uh, for the last five minutes. Who's the club really scoring? Back, walked. Nolan's worked up a sweat during this offensive stalemate. Both teams have been hung on 32-23 and then 32-25. We've only had one basket, Larry, in the last four minutes. Beck, he just never stopped swiping at it. Tim, you know, if Clint McDaniel was back in the game, he would have McCaffrey without him, without him in the lineup. Corey Beck is really the defensive stalwart that the Razorbacks look to on the outside. And he's done a terrific job on McCaffrey, but also credit the Razorback defense because there have been a lot of people playing McCaffrey tonight. Right now it's Beck. Uh, Corey Beck is the team leader on both ends of the floor. McMahon throws one up from the hip, out of bounds to Arkansas. Well, the Arkansas defense is so tough right now. They're just not giving Vanderbilt anything clean. Dillard. That's clean. I'd say he has 10 three three-pointers. The lead is now 10. Game's largest. Continues to dog McMahon, who uses the window and gets the prayer answer. Ronnie McMahon having a terrific first half. So is Dillard. Dillard drives baseline. Beck right there to meet McCaffrey. Good pass to McMahon. Good movement by Vandy. Milburn missed an easy one. You got to make those shots when you're on the road in Fayetteville. Milburn had a really nice look, but it didn't drop. 3.35 remaining in the opening half. Not an unnatural sight to see the fans on their feet in Fayetteville as their beloved Hogs have an eight-point lead. 3.35 remaining. Let's show you the standings in the SEC's Western Division. Mississippi State may be a national sleeper. Alabama playing very well in league play. A number of people would be surprised to see Arkansas tied with those two teams. At least in the loss column right there. As you take a look after the Western Division, take a look at the Eastern Division, you see Florida on top over there. Kentucky just a half a game back. Vanderbilt at three and four in 
chasing Georgia, Kentucky, and Florida. Florida having a terrific year. Lon Kruger has really put together a good team. And the notion that this league was just about Kentucky, Arkansas, and the rest of the field ended a long time ago. Thurman. That's a player control foul. Woods was in the way. But you can tell, Larry, that this Arkansas team is trying to quicken the pace in preparation for that monumental meeting against Kentucky coming up a little over a week from now. Coming up next Wednesday, Nolan Richardson with the jacket off. Sweat coming through that shirt. That man works as hard as any of his players on the bench. Always into the game. One of the real good tacticians you'll find, Tim. He knows how to coach his game, and he knows how to use his players. Caffrey again rushed by that Arkansas defense. Dillard got a hand out there, and it was enough to obstruct the vision of Billy Max. And it'll go over to Arkansas as Remots checks back in. Hogs by eight. Just under three minutes left opening half. Super Tuesday on ESPN. Tim Brando, Larry Conley with you. Happy to have you already. Michigan, a road win against Purdue in the Big Ten. Remox. Boy, he has been hot, Tim. He had 12 points and nine rebounds in his first start against Tennessee, a game that Arkansas was life and death to win over the weekend. McCaffrey looking for three and is fouled by Byler. And Nolan is really upset. And McCaffrey's going to get three. Oh, he is all over Bylan. I think what he's upset about is that he didn't feel like Bylan should be guarding McCaffrey. I think he wanted Dillard on him. Yep. He'll still get a few licks in with John Clockerty as well. But a lot more of... That verbiage was directed at Biley than to the refs. McCaffrey's almost automatic at the line when he walks up there. He came into the game shooting 84% from the line. Just one guy you don't want to foul, particularly from beyond three-point range. The only game I can recall McCaffrey having a problem at the line was the Georgia Tech loss. And you know, Larry, that game lingered with this Vanderbilt team to such a point that it may have affected them the first month of the SEC season. Milburn knocked it away. For those of you that don't recall, that was the Kuppenheimer Classic back in December. Vanderbilt was ranked at that time, let a six-point lead get away. In the closing seconds, Georgia Tech forced it to overtime and went on to win the game. But looking at this uh, second group in here who played very well initially when they came in in this first half. Crawford a runner. Crawford. His first deuce. Nice little stop and pop. Lawson wanted the charge. The player control foul. Didn't get it. A little bit too quick a flop. Pass too quick for Milburn. Vanderbilt's not been able to hold on to the basketball in this first half, and the Razorbacks have been able to take full advantage of it. Lee Wilson wants the ball inside against Lawson. Good play by Lawson. Good slap away. He's got nice hands. McCaffrey, tough pass to Milburn. Well, he put that one in a position where a turnover would be the end result. Miley to Crawford. Backs. Good movement, good recognition. 12 turnovers now for Vanderbilt, and they're down by a dozen. They rise to their feet at their beloved Bud Walden Arena. Crawford again may be guilty, reaching in. Don't forget, this Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, it's number one versus number two 
on the deuce. Duke and North Carolina. Eric Montross and company will be on display. First time that's happened in quite a while in the regular season. And then again, next Wednesday, Arkansas and Kentucky. If you want to see it, call your local cable operator. You can get it on nothing but net. I've never quite seen spelling like that before, <laughs> except on two. to 10 point Arkansas lead. Oh, nice play that time by McMahon on a steal from Remus. They've got four on one. Hall missed the jam. McCaffrey rejected. Oh, the Arkansas defense. Great block, great defense. Arkansas was all over that. Wilson still down on the floor. And the look on John Clockerty's face will tell you how difficult it is for the officials to get up and down the floor at this pace. Timmy, really right here, Hall should have made this. Nobody in front of him, he really should go in and just lay it in. Missed it, McCaffrey back, a little pump fake to get one Arkansas Razor back out of the way, forget it. Lee Wilson right there to slap it away. Vanderbilt will trigger it in. 37 seconds remaining. John has showered off. John had a lot of bodies flying at him there. <laughs> Important possession here for Vanderbilt. To get it under double digits prior to halftime. Shot clock. Only two seconds some differential. That's the game clock you're looking at now. And Hall knocks it home. McMahon almost got a steal. That'll do it at halftime. Basket does not count. Coming up at halftime, the Delta Fawcett halftime report. John Saunders, Clark Kellogg. Those are the stories that they are following. And it's coming right at you. We've had a very entertaining first 20 minutes. Jan Van Putikoff's club struggling against the suffocating defense that is Arkansas. It's 42-34 at the half. Let's get back to our studios and John Saunders. John. All right, Tim and Larry, thanks a lot. Eight-point lead for Arkansas, and welcome to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. John Saunders along with Clark Kellogg. At halftime, as Tim Brando told you, we will break down all of those games and more scores and highlights from around the nation when we return with more of the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report in just a moment. ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Payne Weber. We believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. And by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of Lincoln luxury automobiles. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. Arkansas leading Vandy by eight, and welcome to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Let's quickly get right to the scores and the highlights. Connecticut, the Huskies riding a winning streak in the conference, unbeaten in the Big East, but they had to go up and play Syracuse without their coach. Jim Calhoun has walking pneumonia, so Howie Dickman, the assistant, was there. Ray Allen goes in, Scott McCorkle scripts it, Adrian Autry lays it in, but UConn can play defense as well. D to the third power defense, Doran. Daniel, he got two of his 18 there. UConn by three. Syracuse pushed it back on the second half. Autry takes this one away. This is DeLorence Moten. Moten had a terrific game with 31 points and 10 rebounds. The first Big East loss for Connecticut, 108 to 95, like an NBA game. Syracuse picks up the victory there. The most points allowed by the Huskies in three years. Also in the Big East, Pittsburgh winner at Miami, 80 to 71. Jerry McCullough had 19 points and 12 assists. Miami, 10th straight Big East loss. Nine of those have come this season. Earlier tonight here on ESPN, we started things in the Big Ten. Number 13, Michigan, on the road at Purdue. Purdue had not lost at home this year. Gene Cady saw a great game by Starglin Robinson, one-on-one. -on -one. Gets a pass inside, gets an easy hoop. And then the great pump fake. He had 23 in the first half, but the Wolverines adjust in the second half. They locked him up, doubled him up pretty good, made it tough for him to get good looks at the basket in the second half. Close game late. Purdue's up by one. Derek shot is short. Howard gets it and the foul. Michigan is up by one. One last chance. And they get a few shots at it. 
but they can't stick it back. And Gene Cady comes away with the loss, 63 to 62. Juwan Howard had 17 points, 17 rebounds. Michigan now the top team in the Big Ten with that victory, a half game ahead of Purdue right now, and a half game ahead of the Indiana Hoosiers as well. But rebounding seemed to be the big difference in this game. Well, I think Michigan had a tremendous field day on the offensive glass all night long. Didn't convert until late in the game when it counted. We're going to take a look. Jalen Rose is going to get penetration. Look at him penetrate on the left wing, and look where Ray Jackson goes, right to the middle of the floor. Jalen Rose, after this penetration, is going to be double team. We're going to hold it right there. Now take a look at the double team on Rose. Look at where Jackson is, and look at the heads of Matt Waddell and Link Darner. They're not watching Ray Jackson. They're looking at the ball. Ball gawking, I call it. And watch what happens on this miss by Rose. Ray Jackson able to get inside and finish. And that, John, was a huge basket because that was late in the game and finally Michigan able to convert on the offensive glass. Yeah, tough for Purdue. Six of their last nine games have come down to the dying seconds or overtime. They are now a full game back in the Big Ten. Let's continue to move along in the Southwest Conference. Texas struggled at the start of this year, but they're on a pretty good roll right now trying to grab a piece of the lead, chasing Texas A&M. Tom Pender's a little nervous. Albert Burdett. The long pass of Terrence Wrencher, who lays it up and in. Texas pounding inside. They're doing tremendous work inside. Rich McVi McIver able to handle it inside. Easy finish in the paint. Texas by 15, and Simpson to Burdett. He lays it in. Texas up 53-39 at that point. 16 seconds to go in the game. They lead 84-66. to Extremely comfortable lead. Albert Burdett has 24 points. 10 of 14 from the field. In the Big 8, Colorado at Iowa State. 30-point loss, 99-69. to Julius Mikalik with 37 points. That's the most by a Cyclone in four years. Now, Colorado's leading scorer, Donnie Boyce, did not play. He is a one-game suspension for missing some class. Stay with us. Back with more in just a moment here on Super Tuesday. Plenty more scores and highlights to come. We're at halftime in the SEC. Arkansas has the lead over Vandy. This halftime report is presented by the Delta Faucet Company. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Tomorrow night we return with another doubleheader. We begin in the ACC. Maryland up to 21 on the road at Virginia and St. John's facing Villanova as we move to the Big East at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Meanwhile, on ESPN2, number one against number two, Thursday, 9 Eastern. If you don't have ESPN2, well, you're out of luck, but you could go to a friend who does have it, and maybe he'll let you watch. Back with more in a moment. ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Visa, official card and traveler's check of the 1994 Olympic Winter Games. Welcome back to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. More scores and highlights. Red Auerbach thinking of some prospects. Well, this guy, Yankadare is certainly one of them as he blocks Bavarius Green. Then Kwame Evans getting into the act as he pins this one against the glass. Gail Catlett's club was in for a long night, Clark. Take a look at this picture X passing against the press. Yinka Dare, hello. GW comes away with a victory. 86-73 is the final. Dare with 16 points, 12 rebounds, and three block shots. West Virginia has lost two games. Back to back. Rutgers facing Temple, also in the Atlantic 10. The Owls now ranked number 10, and this one was not pretty to watch. Eddie Jones drives a baseline. Nice move, gets the layup. Then Rick Brunson comes up with a steal. He'll find Jones, who slams it home. Jones had 30 points, 25 in the first half, 84 to 45 for Rutgers. Temple, their biggest conference win in six years, third biggest ever in the Atlantic 10 as they just blow out Rutgers, and their program is struggling. Northeastern against Rhode Island, 83-62. Abdul Fox had 24 points. Andre Samuel added 23. Another non-conference matchup, Mississippi Valley State at Southern Miss, 97-73. Glenn Wisby with 26 points and 13 rebounds. And speaking of rebounds, Southern Miss out-rebounding. Mississippi Valley State, 54 to 28. Tough to win games when it goes that way. Stay with us. Back with more in just a moment. We're at halftime in the SEC. Here's some more scores from Tennessee. Just their second win in their last 10 games as they knock off Tennessee Tech.
So that's the way it is. And even as the head hog in Washington would say, Super Tuesday could once again be the difference in Fayetteville, Arkansas. At halftime, the Razorbacks with an eight-point lead as we reconvene here on Super Tuesday. Along with Larry Conley, I am Tim Brando. That's kind of scary how good he was with that. Oh, I think he may have a second career. The guy in Washington better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fun. It's February. We need to have a little fun. Do we ever. <laughs> Let's take a look statistically at this ball game. I think you'll find that Vanderbilt struggling from the floor, particularly Billy McCaffrey. And from three-point range, that's the way they've been able to hang in. Arkansas getting nothing from Scotty Thurman, but on the other end of the spectrum, Vanderbilt not getting it done with uh, its defense and its defense has got to stop the the rest of the Arkansas deployment. You look at Scotty Thurman, he's thrown up an over, he's over for 5, but they have so much in their arsenal. I mean, you look at Corliss Williamson, he has 10. McCaffrey with 8 points, but he's had to struggle to get them all of them for the most part coming from the stripe. Timmy, you bring up a great point. I mean, they can go with Scotty Thurman go, going over fire, but Vanderbilt cannot go with Billy yeah. McCaffrey going one for seven. No question. They need his offense. Even though he ended up with eight points in that first half, yeah. most of it from the free throws. Runs a nice backdoor cut to initiate the Vanderbilt offense in the second half. Job by Evans to catch up McMahon with good help from the offside as Remont tried baseline. Good pass inside again by Beck. Yeah. Well, Dan Hall cannot keep up with Corliss Williamson. Corliss Williamson had 10 in that first half, most of them on the inside. He's now five of six from the floor after that basket. McMahon blows past Stewart. Nice explosive step by Ronnie McMahon. 44-38. One thing Vanderbilt does not want to do in the early going of the second half is trade baskets with Arkansas. So I can get that run going on you, and they can bury you with four, five, six baskets, and all of a sudden you're looking up way up the mountain. Smart move on McMahon. Beck was in great defensive position. The spacing by Vanderbilt. They got an open shot, and McMahon got it. You know, as Beck tried to force the player with control foul, McMahon a nice job of pulling up. And now doors are only down by four. Mono a mono. Williamson drives baseline. Tim, see, they don't have a stopper. Bandy doesn't have a stopper for Williamson. Once he gets it in that close to the basket, his strength. His willpower will get the ball up. Well, Thurman had a steal right there. McMahon almost put it in his lap. And it's a little bit more patient this second half. Lawson. Off the front line. Chris Lawson, a non-factor in this game. Offensively. Only one shot attempted in the first half. Look at him blow by. Stewart went right by Lawson and missed it. Wide open layup. I think he was almost. Well, as we turn around and see the ball being thrown out of bounds by Evans, I think he was shocked to be as far open as he was. Yep. Watch this right here. Lawson just one and a half, two steps behind Stewart, and nobody there to stop him. Goes in and just misses the layup. Quick feet. The Arkansas big people have not very quick feet by Lawson, though. Stewart fading away. He misses in a row. Two easy ones for Stewart. And with a chance again to get it to four. Tonight, maybe one of those nights he'd prefer to step out from three-point range. Evans, he misses a chipper. Paul knocks it away. Secker is wide open for a tread. He's right back where he started in the first half. Frank Secker all over that trade. Arc. 12 points for Frank Secker, and the Commodores are within three. Let me give it a new name. Let's call it the Trey Arc. <laughs> a foul inside, Hall. Yeah, he's holding against Corliss Williamson, and who could blame him? That may be the only way you can defense this guy. Somehow, I don't think Nolan's being politically correct right now. Foul is 
I'll tell you what, he is, he's barking a different theme than he was on tape a few moments ago. There's a few choice words. <laughs> Some which may not make air. That's right. Corey Beck will trigger it in. earlier Thurman has at this point not broken out so look out and still has it the rest of the way because at any moment it can happen three shots in a row now Arkansas has not been able to convert inside so one thing you don't want to against, do against this club look at Secker all by himself rush that time Evans lost it to Scotty Thurman it'll be controlled to Vanderbilt And Ben Bredikoff's club coming out, playing with more tenacity on the defensive end and patience on the offensive side. Pretty good adjustments made by this Vanderbilt staff at halftime. Mm -hmm. He's assembled a nice staff too. Randy Monroe, Kevin Anglin, and of course Buzz Peterson has spent so much time with Les Robinson. Peterson, of course, played at North Carolina. His senior year was 85. The class spread out the offense just for Vanderbilt. They need some good spacing in there. McCaffrey almost lost it to Beck. Secker again. Rush that time. Good job by Thurman in his face. Crawford on the run out. Rejected by Hall. Who did Hall get it? There's the man. Thurman. It could happen at any time. Look out. In the old days, Burt Jones was the Rustin rifle, but this youngster from Rustin, Louisiana, is the basketball version, believe me. Wilson gets in the way of the dump down that was intended for Lawson from Billy McCaffrey. Just over four minutes gone here in the second half. Vanderbilt to within six. Arkansas up by six in the second half. I want to show you some great hustle on the part of Vanderbilt. Watch Dan Hall right here. He's at midcourt, and watch how Arkansas moves the basketball up the floor and how Hall catches up with it. He's the man at midcourt who runs and rejects the shot by Arkansas, saving two points for his Vanderbilt club. That's just good hustle, Tim. His defensive tenacity, as I mentioned, in the second half, both Halls as well as what... Jan Van Bredikoff wanted from his team has been very obvious. Hall with 14 blocks this year. The key for this Vanderbilt team, though, Larry, is that once they have done the job defensively, they can't be lulled into Arkansas's game on the offensive end. And you can tell from what Coach Van Bredikoff has spoken that his team is reacting on the other end of the floor. Good trap by Arkansas. Vandy very fortunate to get out of it. Shot clock is at 10. Look how quick they are on this zone. Arkansas very quick on the perimeter. Back my hand, can't get it to fall. Still good patience in that sequence for Vanderbilt. Thurman drives past McMahon. Nice screen down inside. Lee Wilson right there to lend a hand. Scotty Thurman with a nice little baseline jumper. Now look out, they come in waves when Thurman begins to light it up. 51. 43, eight-point lead. Lawson. That's the player control foul. Tim, this is one of those basketball games that I think Chris Lawson is almost a dinosaur in. Really difficult for him to play. He's not very quick of foot, and as athletic as Arkansas is, it's tough for him to get in position to make the kinds of moves he wants to make. He's a bull. Inside, strong, but it's tough for him to get the basketball when he's got those guys flying at him from all different sides of the floor. The problem for Vanderbilt, this is a veteran club that's not terribly deep, and he's forced to play perhaps a few more minutes. Crawford, nice ball fake to allow himself back up for the deuce. And the lead back to 10. Vanderbilt had cut it to as many as three. Look at the traps. There it comes in the corner. Baseline pass, an errant one from Milburn. McMahon trying to catch with one hand. You got to get the ball with two hands. That's a difficult pass to make on the baseline from one sideline to the other. 
Ronnie McMahon uh, maybe caught unaware. 14 Commodores turnovers. Six minutes gone in the second half. And Vanderbilt's gone to a 1-3-1 track. That should allow all the three-point shots from Thurman occasionally, and that time Lee Wilson was anticipating Scotty not moving toward the corner. The communication breakdown right there between the sophomore and the freshman. You know, that comes from playing with each other. You begin to know each other's plays, and obviously the freshman hasn't learned the way Scotty Thurman likes to go to the basket. Lawson, straight up, not there. Thurman clears. Crawford on the run out. Good job by McMahon getting back. Thurman dishes to Wilson, and he wasn't ready for that one. McMahon to McCaffrey. Boy, Wilson got a hand on that one as McCaffrey tried to utilize the crossover dribble. Good ball movement by the Razorbacks. Crawford a tray. Berman back in Crawford. That's an example, Larry, of what can happen. Even after Arkansas's empty trips, Vanderbilt got caught up in the 94-foot game. That's what Arkansas wants you to do. Our athletes against yours. We think we've got better ones. Again! Teal, timeout. I'd say the State of the Union was intact, wouldn't you? McCaffrey with the loss. It's going to be the lob to Crawford. He's going to take it up, and it's going to go right to the bottom. Arkansas rolling again. Fatigue will make cowards of us all. And so if we got numbers, that's the key to trying to, to, to play the 40 minutes of hell. We work extremely hard in our practices, and so therefore we expect our guys to play as hard as they can when they come to a game. And the more you have that can do it, the better that 40 minutes of hell is a, a better result from it. There's, there's an example of it right there. You see the turnover? This is what we went to on commercial. Look at Crawford. I mean, he, he was a good four steps before he dumped it. Arkansas's run, 12 nothing spurred over the last 419. And if you've ever been to an Arkansas practice, believe me, then and only then would you understand. The game is gravy. These guys work so hard in practice that they're just out here having a good time when they play at the Bud Walton Arena. Tim, you can see the turnovers that they created. It's not really their full court pressure. It's more their half court defense that's done the job for them tonight. And I think this is something that Arkansas has been able to do all year long and will continue to do. McMahon. Oh, the iron unkind to McMahon. Williamson. Ho-ho. Oh, -ho. that's big. Oh, did he get up. They've blown the lid off. Just listen to this. Robinson gets caught. Tim, watch the great pass by Dillard right here. Good timing to Williamson right in front of the rim. The good catch. Oh, that's a big body. I hope they've got extra bass underneath this place. He may break a few before he's finished. Dillard, not known for assists, gave a pretty good one right there. Right in front of the rim. It's such a great timing play. Corliss Williamson, who takes a seat, is now 7 of 8 from the floor. And you see the run up to 14 to nothing now. Martin has come in and there's another Vanderbilt turnover just when Van Bredekoff's club had seemingly found itself Thurman hit a shot and it was the beginning of the end Tim right now Vanderbilt has lost their composure this is a basketball team in a foreign land they're not sure where they are all they know is they're getting waves of Arkansas Razorbacks making baskets from everywhere on the floor He 
told you they come in waves, and this is truly an example of that. And Thurman is usually a tidal wave. He hits one, he hits two, the rest of the team elevates, and they've blown the roof off the sucker. I mean, it's incredible here. Now they've got it up to 20. Robinson clears. Chad Sharon is coming to the game, number 32 in black for Vanderbilt, with the unenviable task of checking Thurman. Thanks, coach. <laughs> Back. Oh, what a cut. And a nice dish from Martin. Martin looked in there. The double team came from Sacker, and he just forgot about Beck. Caffrey is fouled. That'll be on Dillard. Watch this terrific pass. Watch Sacker come down inside. See the double down right there? He just forgot about him. Easy pass, easy basket. Corey Beck right there to grab it and throw it through. Martin with a terrific look. Scotty Thurman takes a seat. You see Brad Dunn congratulating. This will not go down. It's a tremendous box score game for Scotty Thurman. But he's a team player. And the moment he hit that shot, it raised the level of his teammates. Also raised the level of the people sitting in this building. They they came out of their chairs. One, sure did. Down the right in the suit, obviously Clint McDaniel anxious to get back. In fact, we're here. He's going he's to be back this weekend. That shoulder beginning to heal much quicker. Well, begin practice tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, that shoulder injury, by the way, occurred trying to run through a pick in Starkville, Mississippi. Something a lot of folks have not been able to do well this year. The Bulldogs playing very well in this league. Could be a sleeper nationally. Two low post players, Eric Dampier and Bubba Wilson, have made a difference matchup wise when Richard Williams' club has been on the floor. SEC is blessed with a terrific freshman this year, Tim. Dampier being one of them. Sucker, not there. Hall, ready to follow, and the foul, the end result. I'll tell you another guy that's a freshman, Darnell Robinson, who's playing on this Razorback club. Had he been healthy and able to play all year long, we've been we would have been mentioning his name quite often. Crawford, one of, the, one of those freshmen of impact that you're we've been right. talking about. Crawford picked up that foul. His third. Point Arkansas lead is an eight-point game at halftime. Vanderbilt cut it to three in the early moments, and then Arkansas took off. Well, that's nice for Nolan Richardson to be able to look at that young man for four years. At least he hopes four years. Nice touch from the 6'11 California youngster. Darnell Robinson's first deuce of the game, and the lead back to 20. how far out Vanderbilt is initiating their offense. Razorbacks are pushing them way out from underneath that basket. Nobody in the paint. McCaffrey over Martin. See, that time he got his feet set. He got underneath him, he got his legs into his shot, and he had a nice follow through. Crawford for three. The answer. Good look from Hall to Milburn. He can't control it. And the foul is spotted. Against Elmer Martin. Elmer Martin kind of looked at Don Rutledge was out on the floor and he said, how did you catch me from all the way out there? <laughs> McCaffrey takes the seat. As you see, Davor Remots check back in, and Alec Dillard sits down. I thought you raised a, an excellent point, Larry, about Billy McCaffrey allowing the game to come to him and pressing just a bit. How much of that, in your opinion, comes from it being his senior year 
recognizing that he has to be the leader with guys like Elder and Anglin gone. Well, for as long as you and I have known him, we know what a responsible youngster he is. I mean, he really is a young man who really takes the responsibility of running his club very seriously. He wants his team to do well. He'll do anything to make them perform well. Right now, what they need is Billy McCaffrey to let the games come to him and just kind of get into the flow. You don't want to give up that shot. Even though your passing is much better, you've got to be able to improve your shooting. Back my hand creates an offensive foul. Corey Beck once again in position, and Van Bredekoff's team turning it over yet again. Commodores had not scored from the floor in some five minutes, and the onslaught continues. Razorback D. Tough pass by Martin on the floor. Hall loses it to Beck. And he's fouled. Don't forget, much more action coming your way next Super Tuesday. Jawan Howard's Michigan Wolverines, fresh off that win at Purdue, take on that other team from the state of Indiana. That begins at 7.30 Eastern time. And then Jamie Brandon, who's clearly stepped up his offense for Dale Brown's LSU Tigers on the road in Tuscaloosa to take on surprising Alabama, who has performed very well in the SEC West. Thank you under David Hobbs. Barry Conley and I will have that one for you next week. Make your plans to be with us. A couple of weeks ago, we saw Jamie Brandon in this arena right here just miss an eight-foot shot in front of the basket. It would have given LSU a win and would have given Arkansas their first and only loss in the new Button Walton Arena. So far this year, we've noticed that teams like LSU and Alabama have been teams that have played to the level of their competition. As you see Scotty Thurman coming in and Corey Beck taking a seat, his defense is certainly as much a catalyst to this Arkansas team as Thurman's offense. So we've got a great Big Ten game leading into us next week, but uh, how about that league? Oh, huh? Nobody can decide who's going to win that league. Everybody seems to be even. It is top-heavy in the Big Ten. Tell you what, you cannot hesitate against this Arkansas defense. They recover so quickly with their footwork. You've got to do something with the basketball or you're going to lose it. Oh, all a runner. Draws the foul. That could be and is a three-point play opportunity that's coming his way. And it was a frantic chance that Hall took. But again, it was the, the swarming defense of Arkansas that forced Hall to make a decision. It's the one thing about this Arkansas defense that I really like. I like the fact that Nolan Richardson takes his athletes, puts them on the floor, puts them into position to use their ability. And that ability is great quickness. They've got great footwork on the D, and they make the other team do something with the basketball. If you don't, you get buried. Davor for more. Adding to the tote board for Nolan Richardson. Seven twenty-seven remaining. Arkansas with that 14-point outburst led by Scotty Thurman out to a 22-point lead. Arkansas building a 22-point lead with 727 remaining in the second half. Tim Brando, Larry Conley, happy to have you with us. Therein lies the difference. Arkansas at a 68% clip. Vanderbilt struggling around 35% for the entire game. Scotty Thurman got it all underway. All of those points coming in this half, and again, he was 0 for 5 at halftime, but how he ignites this team for Nolan Richardson is really the point that needs to be made. There's the man who also will ignite this team once he gets back into the lineup. That's Clint McDaniel. He's probably itching to get off of that pine to get back in there. Really the best defender on the ball. He makes so much happen with this Arkansas defense because they convert so much off of their defense to offense. McCaffrey loses it again. Crawford. You know, Roger Crawford has really performed very well on both ends of the floor. McCaffrey with numbers over Thurman. Thurman got in the way, and Billy Mack missed another easy one. 
Milburn gets in the way, deflects it. Now McMahon on the run out. Hits the three pointer. 76 to 55. McMahon, the lone Commodore with offensive punch tonight. He has 18. They've been able to deliver the basketball to his hands. The problem has been McCaffrey's. Thurman off the pick from Crawford. Davao Remots will pick up that foul. Checking Malik Evans. And now Corliss leaves it. It's funny, all this going on with Williamson on the bench for the last few minutes. Like, oh, here come the subs. It's Williamson again. Tim, you know, it, it, it points out the versatility, I think, of this Arkansas basketball team that Nolan Richardson can go big, he can go small. He can go with a quick team that presses, he can back off, play his half court defense, and use the big guys. And I'm talking about Wilson and Robinson on the inside. He can, he can put on a full court zone press or a half court zone press. He can go man to man, any kind of the defenses, and he's got all kinds of offensive weapons. The dilemma he faces, Larry, is on the road in deciding when to go half court, when to play fewer guys, and not press because of what he feels may be a different style of game when he's not playing at the Bud Walton Arena. Well, this is also a basketball team that has lost at Mississippi State. They have lost at Alabama. And they have struggled on the road the last couple of years in the Southeastern Conference. So you're right. It makes a good point to say that they do change their style when they go away from Fayetteville. McMahon. Lawson follows. Chris Lawson finally in the column in the second half. That's his first basket. Now Williamson and Lawson body on body. And it'll be Lawson who picks it up. That's his third. Williamson and Lawson represent about a quarter of a ton on that left side over there. Right at 500 pounds. The numbers on Williamson, 7 of 8 from the floor. I think that will aid his field goal shooting percentages. Ken Biley on the offensive glass. Took steps. It's amazing to come into this arena and see the student body as enthusiastic as it is. I mean, we were here two hours before the game, and there must have been a thousand students in here already at that time. You're right, but the thing that impresses me is how all age groups here, as McCaffrey comes off the back iron and now will follow. The alumni, no matter how old, are into the pregame choreography in this building, and you don't oftentimes see that through the rest of the country. The most well choreographed crowd in college basketball from age 6 to 86. And that's with a great deal of respect to all of the other places we've been. But we're talking about not just students, but fans of all ages. Well, Tim, it's going to be interesting to see how the Southeastern Conference does in attendance this year, because every year the Big Ten always wins the average attendance figures. But with this uh, additional 20,000 in here, which is 11,000 more than what they had at the old Barn Hill, the SEC may be in line to really take over that number one position in attendance in college basketball. Thurman now has 10 after that leaner. 78-58. Ball rejected by Biley. McCaffrey with a pickpocket of Williamson. Oh, that was a slick steal, wasn't it? McMahon for three. He still got the range. He still got the touch. 21 for Ronnie. Again, a good pass by McCaffrey. Don't label him shooter. McMahon is a prolific scorer. He can finish. Williamson at the top of the key. And a push. Spotted. It'll be against Byland. Watch down inside. You see Dan Hall right there against Biley. Oh, I thought maybe Hall got a got, he pushed and then Biley came back to retaliate. A takedown. You know what? It's always the second guy that gets caught. We've been saying this for years. If you're the guy that gets fouled, don't go back and foul again because you're the one that's going to get caught. Biley did. 
And Hall got away with a little push there. Thurman sits down. Lee Wilson checking back into the game. Is Dan Hall. And here is Hall at the strike. Out of Gilbertsville, Kentucky, Marshall County High School. Remots takes it down. Outlet to Corliss. Vanderbilt very poor in defensive transition. Hall and Lawson very tardy in getting back. Corliss was right there. Lawson now has six. 80 to 63. When you see Vanderbilt that late in getting back, Larry, it points up the difference in their fatigue versus Arkansas, doesn't it? Look at Williamson, quick. Oh. So quick. 20 points for Williamson. McMahon spots up again. Well, he is lights out. Ronnie McMahon hit his last three three-point opportunities with 24 on the game. Nice evening for that young man. He's really shooting the ball well. Tim, I think what this points out, the last two trips, Arkansas has gone in there. No problem getting the ball inside. Williamson got it, then Robinson got it. Thurman will loosen him up, but when it comes time to say it's over, it's usually Williamson. We'll be back. We said all ages, and there's the uh, low end of that age bracket we were talking about, Arkansas by 16. I'm sure he'll be watching the deuce if his local cable operator has it. Did he have a nose job? <laughs> it's number one Duke and North Carolina, Thursday, 9 Eastern time on nothing but net. And then Arkansas takes on Kentucky in the matchup that we've been talking a great deal about a week from tomorrow night from Lexington, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Corliss Williamson among those featured, obviously, in that tilt. 82-66. Point run tilted this game toward Arkansas. Six minutes deep into the second half. And it's been a lot of this since then. And a lot more of that. Williamson is so sure handed inside. And once he gets his hands on it, it's like a vice. You can't get it away from him. Secker for three, counted, and he's fouled by Remonts. Well, that's the second time Nolan Richardson has seen a defender commit a foul from beyond the arc. That'll give him just enough to stay angry before their next game. I think this is almost automatic ejection if you're an Arkansas defender right here. When the foul is committed on a three-point play, if it goes in, Nolan Richardson is going to get you out of that lineup. Secker with a nice shot and a chance for a big four. Secker now with 16 points and all but that free throw have been three-point field goal. And it's a 14-point lead. Four-point plays get you back in a real big <laughs> It hurry. does. Steal by second. Three again. McMahon wave it off. Don Rutledge right there. Player control foul against Ronnie. Boy, is that pretty good shooting from three-point range? Look at that. I've been talking a great deal the last couple of weeks about the way shooting in college basketball has been going down, particularly free-throw shooting. It's not evidenced by tonight's exhibition, at least from three-point range by these two players. Difference in this game, turnovers and points off those turnovers, which is not unusual. And the inside stability that Arkansas has had against Vanderbilt. Do they go back to Williamson? Yeah. Why not? He just keeps working and working until he finds himself open. There was a time that when you were playing Arkansas, you'd like to get them in a position with a shot clock under 10. Their half-court offense, not nearly as good as it is now. Milburn rejected. Crawford looks long. There's the cut. Pass was not there from Wilson. Knocked away by Secker. Recent number ones. Well, the Arkansas Razorbacks have held on to number one 
longer than anyone. Carolina had it twice. Now it's Duke for the first time after UCLA fell off the perch. Dillard for three. So many weapons. Dillard went through a short sort of a shooting slump. He's back out of it now, obviously. Had a good game against Tennessee and again here tonight against Vanderbilt. Something else to remember. Vanderbilt came in here at the wrong time as Lawson is fouled. Scotty Thurman had to hit a three-pointer with 9.8 seconds left to beat Tennessee in Knoxville. And you can bet that Nolan Richardson had a little shock treatment waiting for his club as Jan Van Bredikoff prepared to bring in his team from the state of Tennessee in Nashville. Tim, the difficulty for this Vanderbilt basketball team is that they now have got to leave, go back home, practice a couple of days, and they go to Louisville to play the Cardinals, who I think is one of the really underrated clubs in this yeah. country. I think Denny Crum is lining his team up in great position. They always come on in February. They've only lost two games. They're always strong in March. I think this is a club to contend with. We talked about it when we had the Tulane game last week, Larry. This is a team that is very reminiscent of some of his vintage teams of the early and mid 80s at Louisville. One thing about it when you when you played at Arkansas it should be to some extent good preparation for what Louisville will bring to the floor if you're in Vanderbilt situation. I wouldn't wish this upon any time. <laughs> Trying to look for bright spots here. <laughs> I'm sure he that's, is as that's well. That's always a good idea. Uh, go down to Arkansas and play a couple of games <laughs> before you go out to, to face another press. <laughs> Long cases in that bench. As you can see, only a couple of guys with their jerseys off. They don't have the kind of rotation, this Vanderbilt team, to stay with this kind of pressure for 40 minutes, particularly on the road. Tim, the two guys they really depend on, I'm talking about Arkansas, depend heavily on, on offense. Obviously, it's is uh, Williamson on the inside and Thurman on the outside. In fact, they've been in double figure scoring all year long in every game except the last game, which was the Tennessee game. They need those two guys to be in double figures every night yeah. if they have a chance to win. You talk about the defense all you want, but they've got to do something on the O end, too. Under a minute. It's been an impressive exhibition tonight by the Razorbacks. The defense has been exactly what they described it would be all year long. They get McDaniel back for the game next week, the big important game against Kentucky. This club is poised perhaps to, to make a strong march in the march. Beck rejected by Hall. He's played hard all night. Mm -hmm. Several blocks. I can remember three. Making his dad, I'm sure, Jerry Hall, who played in the early 60s crowd. Crawford set play off the inbounds. Look at Corey Beck just work, work, work. Crawford. McCaffrey brings it down. Lawson. Out of bounds control to Vanderbilt. Coming up next at Sports Center. More news from Skategate. The latest on Tanya Harding. The NBA All-Star backups were mentioned today. And some, some more upsets in college basketball. What a surprise. McMahon knocks one in. 89-76. Williamson has it knocked away. And it's all over. But I'd say that Nolan Richardson has his team right where he'd like them for next week's big one in Lexington. Well, he's getting a healthy Darnell Robinson. He's going to get Clint McDaniel back in the lineup, and we should have a rip-roarer in Lexington, Kentucky next week. That'll do it. Our final score, 89-76 to for Larry Conley and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Tim Brando. Thanks for watching, and so long from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Sports Center is next. ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball has been brought to you by Advil. In tablets or tablets, Advil, advanced medicine for pain. By American Airlines, something special in the air. And by Miller Lite, great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this?